I'm going to turn it over to Ken and April, our great leaders over at Project Lead the Way to walk you through our session today. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess before we start, since it's just now two, uh, Ken, did you hit the record? We will yep. record this and we will share uh, the PowerPoint out as well. Uh, I'm April Moon and I am one of the directors for Project Lead the Way here in Texas. I'm south of Dallas um, and I used to teach high school engineering and I was a master teacher for civil engineering and architecture. Ken? All right, I'm Ken Strong, also based here in Texas. I'm north of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, so just north of Dallas about 30 miles and just like April, former high school engineering teacher, uh, did that for 15 years. And then April and I actually taught together as master teachers for about 10 years uh, with civil engineering architecture. And I'll turn it over to Terry to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Terry Schultz. I'm uh, the vice president um, for the East region for Project Lead the Way. So I'm um, actually based in Indianapolis. And um, just want to welcome you all uh, to the session and hope that you learn a lot. And please, please let us know how we can better um, get you the information that makes you more uh, productive with your kids. Thanks. All righty. And uh, hopefully you're in a warm place right now in Texas. It's very cold. For some of you, that may not be um, our cold is not your cold, but we are going to get into the single digits later, um, you know, this weekend. So that's pretty incredible for Texas. Um, all righty, uh, the questions, we want, you, we want this to be interactive and we want you to ask questions. So if you need to come off of um, mute and you also have the group chat that you can type stuff into, then please do so. Um, we will probably limit the questions for each topic until the very end, um, but we do want it to be interactive. So if you've got something that you wanna like stop and ask right then, please do so, okay? All righty, we'll get started. Um, let's see. Okay, there we go. Oh, sorry. Um, like I said, you'll get this PowerPoint. This has our contact information there at the top. Okay, distance learning. Um, I saw on the survey responses that a lot of you um, are aware of some of the basic uh, distance learning resources out there, but not everybody was. So I'm gonna make sure that everybody is up to date. On our PLTW.org website, not your MyPLTW, just our general open website, um, there are more resources now under the Learn More tab. Uh, when you open that, you'll see that that section has grown a bit. And that's where you'll find a lot of the resources that we show today. So in there, and also in your uh, MyPLTW account, you can access the online learning guides. There are uh, a couple here on camera. Um, thumbs up or thumbs down? Have you used the online learning guides? Any? Not, nope, not yet. Nope. Okay. Um, they're really, really good. And there are learning guides for caretakers, teachers, other educators, students. Um, the students is divided up, you know, pre-K through um, fifth. And then there's the student one that is um, sixth grade through 12th. Okay. They say the sound is broken, not clear. Are y'all hearing me okay? It's, yeah, you sound fine on my end. Terry, how about... Hey, you okay? sound great on my end as well. Yeah, me okay. as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I was freezing earlier, so, you know, I, well, I'm freezing, but I'm also freezing on the screen, um, so you never know, uh, but, but thank you for, for letting me check on that. Okay. If you have not downloaded these, uh, please, please do. Oh, and then she did break up. <laughs> and there... <laughs> Oh, geez. Am I here? You're back, April. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Please share these if you haven't already shared these with your caretakers. Um, it's got a lot of information in there, and it's not just PLTW. Okay. All right. Um, we also have come out with um, online fatigue guides. This is very recent. Uh, the links are um, in the PowerPoint, so you'll be able to access them there. And they show up as a um, like a poster, like a vertical poster that you could print. Uh, but you can also go through there and break it up and make it a document that you, you can send home as, as well. This is something we all, I'm sure, could use uh, reading over. 
the distance learning webinars, uh, if you haven't attended uh, them, there's some really great information in there. And we do have all of the past webinars posted. Any upcoming webinars will be um, in there as well. But, you know, if you want to, if you have some time to go in and watch some of these, uh, I think you'll get a lot out of them. Okay, curriculum enhancements. Uh, heard some feedback on the survey. Uh, I think there's still confusion over um, what resources are available. In addition to the resources that are above and beyond the curriculum, there are also curriculum resources. Um, so when you go into your, um, your curriculum and you can look at your unit outline, you'll see there's four categories, which is on the screen right now. The green means it doesn't matter where they're at, they can complete this activity as is. The blue means we are going to edit it a little bit for those that are remote. And so there will be call out boxes that direct them to do things a little bit different. Um, then the category three, this is mainly what I wanna talk about. Um, these are your flexible activities. So this is for, you know, this is not, this lesson cannot be done at home as normal. So you're gonna jump to the distance learning version. And when you do that, even if the software has to change, such as, you know, going from Fusion or here in Texas, a lot of them still use Inventor, um, over to Onshape, all of that will be in there, all of that information. So I've heard some teachers um, say, you know, that they've had to create a whole lot for their remote students. But hopefully the way that it's set up, um, we've tried to do that for you. So if you go in there, um, they'll still have like the category four, to where you have both a blended classroom, so that you'll have instructions for those in the classroom, but you'll also have the category three instructions for those that are remote. You should not have to create those lessons or figure out softwares. Um, everything that's on there should work on a, on a Chromebook, okay? Um, let's see. This uh, is the Gateway, of course, homepage, and the Haskell homepage is set up similar to this. At the very top, you'll see three icons that are new this year. These are all icons that lead you to resources that are above and beyond the curriculum. Um, they're standalone activities uh, and I love them. So, you know, that's something good that came out of the, a lot of these resources were created. Uh, if you, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through each of these, the getting started distance learning um, opportunities and the skills for success. Okay, the distance learning opportunities are your, um, like your career quests and your ethics quests, basically uh, instructions that will, um, will have the students go out where they can learn about different careers and ethical reasoning and so forth. Um, one of my favorite parts is the ethics quest presentation. Um, you go in and you have, the steps um, for ethical reasoning. And that's, you know, a weakness in some of our curriculum until we, so the newest curriculum has ethical reasoning built in pretty directly, um, but some of the older uh, courses don't yet. So you can go here to kind of fill in that gap and they can click on each of these steps and it will take them to information about each of the steps. And then you see up here on the top left, there are a lot of different activities. Um, and that list has grown since the beginning of the year. Look lately, please, please take a look at it again. Mm -hmm. It basically will give you a scenario, and then it will, um, and then it will um, ask the student, you know, how would you handle this in an ethical uh, way? Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> our program, we are uh, cohorted with English, and our English, uh, in our English class, we run. Uh, uh, our ethics. So the, the key question in the English class is, what is a good use of science? Uh, can our English teacher get this uh, pathway or do we have to have him e, uh, PLTW trained in order to get it? Um, on This is above and beyond the curriculum, um, but to access the specific quest, it is inside the My PLTW curriculum. So they have had to log in. Um, what I would suggest on something like that, where it's not curriculum specific, but it's, it's behind the login, is um, that, that you 
go in as a PLTW teacher and just collaborate with the, you know, with the English teacher. Um, and, and you can print the, uh, the scenarios out. Now, if it's curriculum specific, then of course the teacher needs to be trained. Um, yeah. But this is um, above and beyond. So I can check on that just to make sure, but I would think that since you're cohorted with them and this is um, a standalone activity that, you know, we could allow. Could do something like that. Okay, thank you, that's helpful. Yeah, yeah, we can get back with you for sure. And we'll make sure. I don't wanna say something wrong. Now, a lot of the resources for distance learning, um, like I said, are on the pltw.org website. And so those are open to, you know, public. Okay, the discovery quest, which are um, also on the homepage of the Gateway and the high school courses, uh, they have the transportable skills, basically like your 21st century skills. And so they go in and they can click on these different boxes and learn a little bit about each of them. And then finally, the skills for success um, section there uh, at the top goes in to a lot of just, in layman's terms, just, just questions that the kids may have, especially if they're in a remote situation. Um, I just pasted some here that you can kind of see, um, not too hard to understand or too technical. I don't feel like working. How do I motivate myself? <laughs> Um, so and then they'll click on that and it will take them to more information. All righty. Um, the VEX V5 transition, transition, I'm going to turn over to Ken. All right. Thank you, April. You know, next slide, please. All right. So for the, um, VEX V5 transition. So on the left-hand side, we have the high school courses that, are being updated. Oop, and April change the screen on me. Um, I was going to say it as well. Is we have principles of engineering, computer integrated manufacturing, and aerospace. Um, is it going to be updated just for the VEX V5? So, sorry, I'm letting April switch screens and do all this here. <laughs> so we have the AE um, VEX V5 will also be used in the curriculum next year. And then for the gateway courses, it will be the automation robotics. So for this current school year, it is only the VEX Cortex that is being supported in the curriculum. But then next year, you will have both the VEX Cortex and the VEX V5 supported in the curriculum for those courses over there, along with um, AE. And then this summer, any training that is held for any one of those courses, the teachers will be shown with the VEX V5 and not the Cortex. Next slide, April. Okay, and I did just want to point out um, again that because we had a question on one of the survey about the V5s, do I have to order the whole new kit? And so obviously, like, like Ken explained, um, no, we'll have yeah, the, upgrade, the upgrade kit is what just you actually froze a couple times there April actually can you go to the next slide and I'll, I'll touch on that <laughs> all right so um as April was talking about is the custom upgrade kit so if you currently have VEX equipment in your classroom for POE sim AE or uh, automation robotics, you have the full kits, right? So the custom upgrade kits would be all that you need to order in order to tra transition to that uh, VEX V5. Um, some new updates with that are is for every one full Cortex kit that you currently have, and that's including all structural components, that Cortex brain, the remote, everything, you will only need to order one custom upgrade kit. And the reason why it's it's one-to-one -one now is because we've made some updates, which I think are absolutely amazing. And this definitely helps districts as we transition to the VEX V5 is we've added another brain, some sensors. So basically that custom upgrade kit is everything that you would get in a full kit, 
minus the structural components, all right? To locate these, um, once you go into your My PLTW account and you go to the PLTW store, on the left-hand side, just like the screen, um, you see on the screen, you see the filter options. You will select optional for PLTW programs. You'll select that box and then hit update filters. And when you update filters, when if you scroll all the way down to the grade area um, within the store, you'll see whatever course it is, right? And then you'll see custom upgrade kits. And that's where you can order those kits. At the very top, it will already be shown for you. That's where you, if you need more full kits, that will be at the very top. Um, and there is a question, what is VEX V5? So VEX V5 is, um, I guess the equipment that is used in those courses, principles of engineering, computer integrating manufacturing, aerospace and automation and robotics that this, it's used within the curriculum. It's also used with first robotics. Um, the VEX V5 is a definite upgrade from the previous Cortex. For example, you see on the screen here, this is the new VEX V5 brain that is absolutely amazing for, it's definitely an upgrade from the Cortex brain because on here, you can see you can plug in more. It's a touch screen. It will actually troubleshoot for you right on the screen. So if you have too much torque going to one of the motors, it will actually tell you motor whatever has too much torque going to it and you need to fix it. So there's no going through with the old brain. You had to kind of go through going, is this wire connected? Oh, that pin's busted. Now I need to change it out. So Terry, what are you gonna say? Oh, I just wanted to make sure if Colleen, um, if her answered, if, if her question was answered. I mean, you know, VEX is just robotics. I just want to make sure she understands, you know, it's kind of specific in the V5. So I just want to make sure that we answered her question okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, good. Yes, the V5 um, is really, really cool because, you know, in the past you would have to hook it up and download the program. And now you can do a whole lot just from the robot itself. Uh, if you have not uh, started thinking about transitioning, you definitely want to look into it. If you cannot transition right now, um, I would not let that stress you too much. Uh, we are, because of the COVID and the pandemic and um, a lot of things, you know, we're trying to make a lot more flexible um, for the districts. We are gonna have both versions. Um, available next year, the VEX Cortex and the VEX V5. So you'll still have access to the Cortex. I just had a, a real quick question. Um, if if it's, you're saying it's one-to-one, -one, so if I have five current VEX kits, or which are the old ones, then I need to order five V5, correct? Uh, the upgrade kit For PoE, okay. So yeah. I also need to order VEX equipments for yes. IED. Um, so um, Different, um, Ken, you wanna go ahead and- oh, No, go ahead, you're answering. Oh, <laughs> that's a little bit different. Um, that's just the VEX IQ. Um, um, well, my question is, do I need to order those VEX IQ for IED? If I already have, I mean, I have two separate teachers, two separate classes, right? Two different times. I'm, um, so I'm just wondering, is anything from my POE VEX, could the, any of that be used for the IED classes? Or do I need to just order VEX IQ? It's uh, for a different purpose. So like you're not gonna be doing like the coding and the robotics, but if you look in, um, and Engineering Essentials has it as well. It is like one of the VEX IQ kits. It's like 200 and something dollars um, for the class or it's, it's not like, uh, in, investing in robotics. Uh, I think the name VEX is just confusing everybody. Um, you'd have to modify the activities if you wanted to use the high school, yeah. the, uh, the, the POE VEX. Yeah, um, and the simplest way to put it is the VEX that is with the high school is the metal, right? So you have the metal structural components and everything else. You have the, the brains and everything else. The VEX that is the VEX IQ that is within IED, that is the, the plastic kits. That's the same kits that actually is used within launch. 
um, that the kids will use in different activities in throughout the curriculum with IED and that the new IED curriculum. So yeah, you would want to order the VEX IQ for IED and then the VEX V5 for POE and those other courses. I don't know who asked that question, but does yeah, that but answer it? Mind, um... Yeah. I oh, don't, thank you. Sorry, just... I was mute, muted. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Tracy, Tracy Jardina yeah. from Dallas. Yeah. Just keep in mind that um, you don't use it for the robotics purposes um, in those um, intro introduction courses. And so the investment is, is very low. You're really just using it for the structural components, um, not the motors and, and all of that. So uh, if you wanted to modify that activity, um, and you had your own structural components of a different type, you probably could, but to do all the mechanics that the metal requires, um, the activities weren't, weren't built to take that much time in the classroom, so. Okay, all right, great questions. Okay, informative assessment tool. This is- uh, Amber, there's a couple more that came in on the VEX. So okay. Or at least one, how many VEX IQ? Kits I recommended for each upgrade. So that's okay. a little bit. Oh, no, no. Two yeah, separate it's two questions. separate things. So your VEX IQ um, construction kits, you can think of them like fancy Legos. Um, they don't have all of the electronic uh, parts. Those are just for constructing and building. Um, and that's for the introduction courses, IED and EES. Uh, and, and you only need, I, I don't know, Ken could maybe look it up while we're talking, but it's very, it's like one kit per classroom or per so many students. It's not one to four, like the VEX um, V5 EDR um, kits are. So I don't know if that answers the question or not. And um, if you- The price for each upgrade kit V5 for POE. Uh, the, all the prices will be within the MyPLTW store. So when you log into your MyPLTW account, and when you go into store, if you select the POE, and then, you know, obviously enter everything, all the other information that is needed there. And then on the next screen, when you go to the filter options and scroll down, it'll give you the price there. And I'm checking on the the number for the VEX IQ, and I'll post that in the chat here in a second. Okay, yeah, that would be good. Thank you. All righty. Okay, um, informative assessment tool. If you have not already been using this, um, you definitely want to. Uh, it's definitely the time of the year that you want to jump right into that. Uh, these are the tests that allow the students to practice for their EOC, um, it does test over the transportable skills as well as the content. When I say the word practice, I'm hesitant because we have practice tests still, which have like, I don't know, like five questions or something, and it really isn't content specific and whatever. Um, that's just to get the students used to using the tool. If I were still in the classroom, I wouldn't do the practice test. I would do the informative assessment tool because they're gonna get that experience using the tool and they're also getting content rich questions that relate to the course. So, um, you know, you can do the practice test or not, but either way, I would definitely, definitely recommend the informative assessment. It's about 50 questions for each course that is tested. Um, when you go into your, your MyPLTW, you can um, access under, under My Sites, you can go in there to manage your EOCs. When you do that, you're opening up your educator portal, your Kite educator portal. So it's linked to your MyPLTW. Once that opens here, you see on the screen, um, in the middle, there's it, it says interim. That is where you go to do these informative ass ass assessments. Practice test, but careful about the word practice. Um, but that's where you go, okay? So you can go in there and we have all kinds of videos and how-to guides and everything that you would possibly um, need to reference um, on how to set this up. This year, because of COVID, we do have it to where the students can do the informative assessments from home off of a browser, okay? So that's for this year only, and it is just for the informative assessments. 
Um, for the EOC, that's a different beast. We'll talk about it in a second. Um, okay, so here I just put down at the bottom terminology because people sometimes uh, get confused. Interim, you see that's what it's called here on the tab inside of the educator portal, the kite portal. Informative assessment is what we reference it as. Um, some people call it practice tests or practice questions, um, which is, is true. Uh, just be careful with that. Like I said, this is the real deal, like 50 questions like that would be on the final exam, uh, broken out by topic area. Um, whereas we do still have the old practice test that you can still access as well, okay? Uh, you will have this presentation. This has a link. We have a lot of materials in the knowledge base about informative assessments and EOCs. However, we have made changes this year to make it easier. Um, so I definitely would recommend if you go to your MyPLTW, uh, we had a recent announcement that had this assessment administration manual in it. Um, you can just post and see through your announcements there. Uh, this is the document. This is the only one that you really need um, to reference as far as the informative assessment and the EOC. And it does have links in there for like if, if you need to modify um, for a student and so forth. Uh, it has the, the white, the whitelist and the firewall stuff. It has everything in here. And on page 11, it talks about informative assessments. <clears throat> and then there's also a video on how to create informative assessments. And I put the link right here. When you click on that interim tab, this is what you'll see here on the screen. And you can build or select a test. And then once you have them built, you can go in under my test. And then of course, you'll have the results as well after the, the students take the informative, okay? This is um, what it looks like when you go in to build test. I selected principles of engineering and there's different uh, topic areas. And each one of these topic areas has five questions in it. Um, pretty, pretty creative, in-depth, really solid questions that measure transportable skills and content. Um, you, all you have to do is just like click on the little plus sign. Let's say I just got through teaching engineering ethics and I just wanted to test them on that. So I just click the plus sign there. Well, this isn't, this is the PowerPoint. I didn't mean to really click. <laughs> you just click the plus sign right there and then you just name it whatever you want. Quiz, whatever, practice, whatever. And then um, the, the students are able to log in through their browser or through the student kite software either way and take the take the quiz and then you'll have the results by student individually and by course so it's really good on getting feedback too on how effective um, you are being in certain areas as a teacher okay this is an example of what it looks like when you click on one of those um, topic areas um, it's just like the real test so you'll have your, your passage and then you'll have your, your answers. Um, they can go backwards and forwards. There's built-in calculators and so forth. So just like the EOC. And you can do, let's say I had, um, I wanted um, 20 question uh, assessment. So I would just choose four of the units that related uh, to what I had just finished teaching. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the EOC. Um, the real deal here. Uh, Before you move on, on oh, yes. I just have a, a quick question. Um, in the informative assessment, has that already been tested with the ISDs um, to make sure that it's okay with their little Chromebooks? Um, the informative assessment, as far as it being um, accessible this year only um, for the first time through the web browser off the Chromebooks, that has been tested. Now, has it been tested by DISD? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know, um, but it, it does work. It will work on the Chromebooks. Uh, you just need to make sure that you follow the instructions, um, you know, that are in the, the, the guide. Okay. Does that help you? And that's new. So in the past, oh, that yes, okay, wasn't an you. option. Okay. Okay. Um, the EOC, um, so if you're in a blended situation or if you're in a remote situation, some districts are pulling in their students to take the EOC like in a, in a cafeteria or something in bulk or pulling them in and, and letting them take their exams in the classroom. Some aren't 
pulling them in at all. Um, if you are not pulling in the students at all to where you can proctor it in the normal fashion, um, then you will have to go through uh, an improved uh, an approved proctor, um, which we have um, we have some recommendations for that, but that's really not a PLTW thing. Um, so if you already have one, then you can just work with us to make sure that it's you know it's good to go. Um, April, can I chime but, in on that? Know, Real quick. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So for the, if you have your virtual students, you know, PLTW is kind of, I'll say quote unquote partnered with monitor edu to proctor our EOC test. Now, if you have a proctor that within your districts that you have used for proctoring any sort of test, right? Um, you will need to talk with your director of school engagement uh, from your area and get with them to submit, you know, who that is. So our, assessment team can review that um, before it's approved or not approved, whether you, have, you can use yours that you've been using or we'll need to use monitor EDU. Um, so just wanna make sure I got that in there. Go ahead, April, sorry. Perfect, thank you. Um, and with that said, if you're sitting there thinking there's no way, you know, we're gonna be able to do that, um, some districts are just gonna pass on, you know, testing their remote students this year and that's okay. Um, we understand, we understand that. Of course, you know, if the students can be tested, we want them to, um, especially because we have that student score report available for them. Uh, but we do realize that there's a lot of challenges with uh, remote testing right now. So uh, don't feel pressure if you're not doing it. Now, with that said, some states, I think some of you are required um, to do it. Everybody's different. Uh, so if you need to get with your director, uh, we can connect you with who the right person is uh, and they can help you because it's all very state specific, sometimes district specific. Okay. I got three kids in college and remote testing is crazy. <laughs> so I, I get it. <laughs> all right. Um, EOC, so once again, I just put the same exact link for the assessment administration manual here um, that I did for the informative assessment. Uh, you can use it. And now, this year, there's a wonderful thing. Um, with the, the, the students that are in my PLTW that are rostered, okay, that's going to immediately connect to the Student Kite um, portal site, okay? Uh, and then from there, the students can, like if they're self-rostering, they can do it up front, or even if they're not self-rostering, when they log into their my PLTW, they'll see a notification saying that their, um, you know, their personal information has not been completed yet. Basically their race and ethnicity, okay? So uh, the students can complete it. Teachers can also complete it if the students are dragging their feet on that. But that has to be complete before the EOC. It does not have to be completed before the informative assessment. So you can jump right into the informative assessment ASAP without having to worry about that. Um, once the students' profiles are set up and they are finalized, you still have to go in and set up your class, um, you know, the final, the, the EOC, uh, and then they can connect to that. But all that stress of having all of that um, entered through a spreadsheet is uh, a thing of the past. You can still do it via a spreadsheet if you want to, though. Uh, we do have Clever Integration, which I know some of you use uh, as well, but just keep in mind that the students will have to fill in their race and ethnicity before the EOC not the informative. Also keep in mind um, that if you're not able to do the EOC, I would highly recommend that, you know, you do have the students uh, take the informative and you use that as feedback for yourself as well. Um, I don't know that I would say I would do it as a, like a, an important test grade if I were the teacher, because, you know, you can't lock them out on the student kite portal on the interim assessment. You can on the EOC, but it doesn't on the um, the interim assessment. So I don't know if I would use it as a grade. Um, well, I would use it as a grade to be honest, but I don't know if I'd use it as a major grade, uh, but it would definitely be something that would give you feedback if you're not able to have that EOC feedback. Okay. April, um, is there- What is NAF's position on EOC? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tracy. I'm sorry for interjecting. Uh, I just had a quick question. When I, um... I, I uploaded all the data, right? And I have my students, I've, I've noticed some of my students when they log in, 
it'll say that they need to complete their profile. Um, do you have like a, in the manual or in a video, actually a video would be fantastic, a video of what the students see when they log into PLTW so that I could direct them, okay, come go here and click here and type in this and go to the next screen. Do you have something like that? Yes, there is in the assessment administration manual, um, there is the KITE um, student portal installation instructions and, and it will step them through that. So they can um, they can click on that when they log into their MyPLTW and then they'll just fill in their race and ethnicity or they can put that they don't prefer to share that information. Um, that's an option as well. It just has to be complete before the EOC. But all of that is linked through this one um, document, which, which, like I said, if you go to your MyPLTW and just scroll down um, a couple of announcements down, you'll see that manual. But there's no video, right? Um, for the kids? I don't know if for the Kite student portal, um, there's a video, but there's definitely images. Um, everything is, okay. you know, step-by-step -step images, very easy to understand. Okay. All righty. Um, thanks for the question. I had, um, I, I saw in the chat, it said, what is NAF's yeah. position? The, I'll let that in. one already, already, April. The other question was the VEX okay. options for kids using Chromebooks. I always mess this one up. Is it VEX code VR code studio or is it code studio? I always get it wrong. Which one is it? Do you remember? For the distance learning? Otherwise, I would I have to open up the curriculum and see if you're asking me. Um, but yes, there are options that will allow you, the, the students to code and to build um, the robotics virtually. Of course, it's not the same experience exactly, but um, it, there, that's in there under your distance learning um, flexible activities. Okay. All righty. Okay. Um, EOC, did you know? I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that the PLTW Kite 2.0 um, you need to download that. Supposedly, if you have last year's version, it may still work, but according to the documentation, you need to download 2.0 for it to work. So I would say just make sure that they download that. Um, when we say download for the EOC, the actual software has to be downloaded. Like that, they can't do that um, on a, I don't think they can do that on a, can they do that on a Chromebook? The EOC. Now, I know they can do the, the interim assessment. The EOC can be done on a Chromebook as well. Okay. But when they, when you download, okay, so the, we had this conversation earlier. When you download, it's not really like a normal download. It's so, through an app. And it, Ken can explain that real quick. So, yeah. So, uh, that instruction manual that April talked about going to, so that when you go into your My PLTW now, when you first log in, that main dashboard when you come in, uh, right where you see courses, professional development, and store. Um, the announcements that are right there, there's one that says prepare to administer 2020, 2021, and of course assessment. If you go into there and you look at that 45 page document, it has the, and I'm going to use air quotes when I say installation, because uh, I know when we talk Chromebooks, people go, you can't install. Um, it gives you the directions and how to install on a Chromebook, because you're not really installing anything on the Chromebook. You're basically going to the web store and installing an app on the desktop that is the Kite portal. Um, and our assumption is this is probably not going to be something that is done by the teacher. This may be done by the IT department within the district, um, because you got to go, if you don't have the admin rights to that Chromebook, you won't be able to go to the to the settings, go to kiosk and turn some things on and off that you'll need to do. But if you look at that guide and you have Chromebooks and you look at that Chromebook installation, the directions are very, very, very clear. And we talked to our assessment team yesterday and they said, yes, this definitely can be done on Chromebooks. We've had over 50,000 people test on a Chromebook. And that's what I was told. Yes. We were told yesterday. So it can, yes, it can be done. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, 
yeah because i was a little confused at first too i'm like how do they download the software and but just follow the instructions and um, that's all really you have to know is it just go to the instructions and it does work um the daily access codes the students are going to need um you'll need to print those off cut them up pass them out however you do it um they are available the day before at 3 30 but of course i wouldn't give them to the students until right before you know you wanted them to test um if you have them doing both part one and part two each part usually takes about a class period like a 50 minute class period um there's no hard time um that's ticking down like it used to back in the day but ideally you're using about a class for each part um, a class period um, of about 50 minutes. So if you're going to do both in one day, um, one setting, especially if you're pulling the, the students in um, from a remote situation just for testing day, then you'll need to make sure that you print out separate daily codes because it's really set up for part one and part two to be done two different days. So you'll each student will have two access codes on there. Um, okay. Uh, just in case you're new uh, to PLTW, you haven't seen it, this is what it looks like when the students go in to test. Um, 25 questions, you know, is typically what they'll have um, in, in about a class period, 40, 50 minutes. Okay. And before there used to be a clock that would tick down and so the students would be nervous and the teachers would be nervous and um, now it's, it's the teachers are the professional and they know you know how to monitor and manage their students on that so um you you will monitor the time on your own okay the scoring uh, i still find that a lot of people are a little confused about how the score reports work this is an example of one uh, we have what's called a scaled score uh, or a standards based score and that is um, overall the student will make um, a score will earn a score between 100 and 600 and then depending on which course it is because they have different breakpoints um, that will uh, tell you whether or not they're a novice practice accomplished or distinguished um, and then then we also have the skill cluster broken down one through sixes down at the bottom so really long story short um the overall score uh is really what you're really looking at so like in this one you're looking at the 150 uh and the rest of this is just to give you more detailed feedback and to give the students more detailed feedback on how they performed okay then you have what's called the uh, score interpretation guide and for me as a as a teacher this is this would be important um especially in a year like this to where these uh, levels, this novice advanced and everything, it's kind of in a normal situation, like what you would expect the students to perform. But this year there's been a lot of complications and we know that. Um, so when the score interpretation guide is updated, um, I would definitely, if I were still teaching, I would definitely want to go back and look and see how my students did. You can think of this as a percentile comparison across the nation. Um, a lot of people have asked, well, how do I know how my students did compared to other districts? This is what you'll look at. Okay, so if you look at just the um, the, the the level on this slide, like the novice, and then you look at just the scale score, you won't know. But if you go to this table, the normative table, um, you can think of all of those numbers as percentages. So, for example, I know it's very hard to read because uh, I just took an image, but like in uh, digital electronics. If I, if my students scored a 280, whew, my eyes are crossing, okay? My eyes may have crossed, but I think it's, <laughs> if I lined it up right, um, that is a, a 30. So what that means is, you know, basically two thirds of the nation did better than that student. Um, they're, they're in the bottom 30% but still not bad. There's also the levels, they're hard to see on this slide, but where it's shaded is the different no, different levels from novice, you know, to, to your, your, your average levels and then to your advanced. Okay, sneak peek at engineering essentials. And I know that we're running short on time. Um, that is just a Texas POS, so I'm gonna skip right over that uh, since, since not everybody here is from Texas.
Um, so engineering essentials, uh, it is, the way I think of it, it is a lot um, broader than IED, but definitely not as deep as far as engineering design. Um, so it's, it's very attractive for that um, introduction kind of STEM course. And it has four units. The first unit is really process engineering uh, or industrial engineering, which ties to really the whole pathway. And then the second unit focuses more on mechanical engineering, um, which is like our POE course. And then the third is electrical solutions, so our DE course. And then the final unit is infrastructure solutions. And that's really where they get into like the urban planning and the logistics and civil engineering and so forth. Um, you can tell that these are very um, popular, very broad uh, specializations under engineering. And the problems that are presented under each of these different units um, are very real world, okay? So this is really targeted to attract students to the field of engineering um, in a way that shows them that engineers help, help the world, okay? Um, and it does tie to healthcare, public service, uh, manufacturing, so forth. It's not purely just engineering design, okay? Um, GIS system, GIS is in there, uh, which is becoming more and more popular. Um, a little bit of CAD is in there, electrical circuits um, as well, plus the grand challenges, which I was super excited about. Uh, if you haven't in, seen the, the grand challenges yet, I highly recommend that you look that up. Um, they, they make, they're wonder, I mean, they're the real topics that our world's concerned with. So um, in this course, we try to, you know, incorporate them and tie to them instead of making up our own problems. Um, unit one um, is just that here's the lessons that you'll see in there, natural disaster relief center, systems engineering, so forth. Unit two is more about the mechanics um, and a little bit of statics, which is my favorite subject. Um, <laughs> and so you'll get into a little bit of simple machines and, and that sort of thing. Um, this is where they'll probably incorporate the VEX IQ and the structural pieces. Lots of, lots of career connections. As we're updating the different courses and as we're coming out with new courses, you'll see career connections very clearly um, called out throughout the whole curriculum. Uh, unit three, power up. This is more of your digital electronics, um, but all, all of this revolves, each unit will revolve around real world problems. They're not just learning in isolation, okay? And then unit four is the sustainable um, urban environment, and they're really learning about um, sustainability as well as like urban planning, logistics, um, you know, kind of the big, bigger, the higher level picture um, than just a specific engineering role. Okay. Um, just wanted to throw this in there. Just a quick reminder, solid professors out there. I know that, you know, we changed from Inventor and then we went to Fusion, or at least some people did. Um, in Texas, most people still use Inventor. But um, then now there's additional changes if you're using Onshape. Just know that you do have Solid Professor as a free resource uh, if you are, are trying to brush up on some of the skills or transition to a new software. Um, that is directly under your MyPLTW under professional development. Okay. Now we have 10 minutes uh, left. And I know we like went through tons of information. <laughs> In really fast, uh, in a really fast way, uh, but do want to open up this last ten minutes for questions. And you can just take yourself. Anybody have questions? I think we caught all of the questions in the chat. Correct. Um, I had a question about um, ordering graduation materials. Oh, okay, yeah. And then yeah. ordering promotional materials. Okay. So I just yes. wanted to um, make sure you went over that. Okay, yeah. Um, so you can order, uh, let me see. I don't know if, Ken, you're pulling it up or not. Um, you can order the promotional materials, the banners and, and so forth. Um, 
the graduation, I would, I would think that we still had those, you know, we used to have the NAS blue stoles and it said Project Lead the Way, um, very reasonably priced. Uh, and I said, for my students, um, when I was a teacher, they had to have four Project Lead the Way courses um, in order to wear that stole. So I, I, I don't know if that's what you're exactly talking about, but um, those are still out there. Uh, let's see. Do that is, I just the because um, I've been to the site, but is but when I do when I go for equipment, all I need to do is take that parts list and send it to my um, to my purchasing clerk. But when I go outside of the site to pltw.org and I go to the store, mm -hmm. it's asking for me wow. to um, enter a PO, but I need a quote in order to order it. So what is the process? I mean, I, I've just, I'm not, I'm a little confused about the process. Do I just need to call PLTW and ask for them to send me a quote directly? You can always, um, yeah, you can always call the Solution Center and ask um, for that. We can always do quotes. I know Dallas um, is one that, that often needs quotes beforehand. Uh, also, I can help you with that, Tracy, as well. Um, but if you want like a formal quote, then I would have to go through the Solution Center as well. I can do a cost estimate, um, which some districts will accept as, as a quote to base the PO on. Um, so it really, either way, Solution Center or me, um, we can get you what you need for that. Thank you. I just had on one more question. I'm so sorry. I have, I couldn't wait hey, no, for this meeting because so many questions. Um, I, I have one more. So. When in our curriculum, we are, instead of DE um, in our 10th grade year, we're, we're teaching computer science principles. And with NAF, we are allowed, we're, we don't, we're allowed to do two things with NAF. You can use the EOC assessment or you can use the course grade. So we're using the course grade, but in uh, NAF, it is not counting computer science principles as part of the PLTW engineering set. It's it probably under computer science. It's under computer science or, or IT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's under under IT. But I saw that that um, there was something you put out in December that said it had moved to um, engineering. Is that still true or? It's actually listed on both. So computer science principles is listed on the engineering courses along with the computer science courses. It's listed on both just for PLTW. Um, for PLTW, yes. So, so NAF won't have CSP under engineering. Um, and, and actually, cyber, um, the last time I checked, um, cyber wasn't under STEM. But like in Texas, cyber's under STEM now. So that's even more complicated. <laughs> um, so each situation, I think, you know, would depend on what state it's in. And, and uh, maybe NAF could help you a little bit with figuring that out but yes, yes I, I, mean, Tracy, like, you're right. I would like to have SEP. Tracy it, um th this is definitely a question for you know Richard's team and um and our portfolio manager in Dallas every NAF Academy is different district guidelines so um definitely a question for them is this something I could send to them? What, what it does is it messes up my students they think that they're not going to graduate because they don't have two courses by the time they're in their junior year. And then by the time they're in their senior year, in NAF, it only shows that they have two courses, not one, not three. Right. Yeah, so, so I, I just wanted to see. I'll reach out to you directly. Okay, thank you very much. So, yeah, is this not record. encountered in any other district? Is this just a Dallas thing? I'm not sure how to answer your question without looking at everybody oh. else's <laughs> pathway program. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Thank you. I got you. It's, um, and it's the same way, Tracy, like on the um, TEA program of study, in, you know, in Texas, CSP is not under the engineering program of study. It's under a, a separate one. Um, mm -hmm. But we allowed CSP under our engineering um, options so that you could have your students have a coding class without having to pay the additional computer science, um, you know, participation fee. Um, hey, well, we got another gonna, question. In the chat. Okay. Um, it says, can, okay. we, can we skip IED if the academy decides to go for engineering essentials? 
Um, yeah, so some schools are using engineering essentials um, instead, but most schools I would say are using engineering essentials before IED or in parallel, depending on the math level um, and the focus of the student coming in uh, to, that, to that pathway. Um, you know, from a personal opinion, Ken and I taught, um, I think I taught five different uh, high school engineering field to W courses. Um, you know, I'd really want them to have IED. And that has a lot of your 3D design and your, your inventor or your fusion, whichever one you're using, or now on shape. Um, and a lot of your technical documentation um, around your dimensions and so forth. And they're not necessarily going to go to that level in EES or engineering essentials. So I would eventually want my students probably to go through IED. But that's not a requirement, okay? That's, it's up to the district. Um, I just shared the store in case some of you were like, what are they talking about? <laughs> um, on our general website, there is a promotional item store um, that, that you can get to. And so in here, you know, you can get t-shirts, sweatshirts, you can even have masks now. Um, so they're $5 each uh, and they have peel to w on them. And then there's banners and, and that sort of thing. That's what Tracy was asking about earlier. Uh, I don't see the stoles, the graduation stoles like I used to. Um, I'm sure that you can probably still get them, but I would, you know, I'd have to do some digging. Oh, wait, here it says graduation. Um, well, there you go. There it is. $17. <laughs> and um, it's, of course, you got biomed and computer science as well. But um, these, these stoles are pretty good quality. Um, that's a great price, especially with them being printed on, because uh, I used to be senior class sponsor. So I definitely know that. Um, Definitely something that, you know, you should consider, um, but have requirements around how they can earn it. Okay. We got All three right. minutes. I was going to say we have through two minutes and um, we just got, you know, the thank you for the information. So I feel like, you know, we might want to stop here for today. And I think that we'll think about what we talk about next, um, since we have a great captivated audience with you all. So thanks so much, April and Ken and Terry for getting this all together. We really appreciate your time today. Um, I will be emailing everybody participating and getting you um, feedback form and then the recording once I get it from the Project Lead the Way team. And uh, we'll be seeing you around virtually for sure. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Thanks. and thank you um, for letting us join you today. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. You guys have a great afternoon and stay warm and safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.